Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the preview event for Bloomboro. So thanks again to Wizards for having me. Today we're taking a look at a red-white mouse aggro deck featuring the new Valiant mechanic. Taking a look at Heartfire Hero for instance, a 1-mana one 1-1 one -one with Valiant, saying whenever the hero becomes a target of a spell or ability we control for the first time each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on it. So it's somewhat similar to the heroic mechanic, but it also triggers off abilities and then only once each turn. And and then when the hero dies, it deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. We also have the Flowerfoot Swordmaster with Valiant giving all mice we control plus one plus zero until end of turn. And it also has a new offspring mechanic, so we can pay two additional mana when casting the Swordmaster to generate a 1-1 one -one token version of it, which will then also have that same Valiant ability. Then we're also playing with a cheeky house mouse from Eldrain as a 2-1 for 1 mana, but it also has a targeted ability to maybe enable Valiant if we have some creatures in play already. Then at 2 mana there's the Emberheart Challenger, a 2-2 with haste and prowess, so already this is a totally fine card. And then it also has Valiant, where we get to exile the top card of our library until end of turn we may play that card, so it can potentially generate some card advantage. Then the Manifold Mouse is awesome here as well, a 1-2 with Offspring, and at the beginning of combat on our turn, target Mouse we control gains our choice of Double Strike or Trample until end of turn. So by targeting our Mice with this ability we can also enable Valiant, so this is a great Valiant enabler, and of course giving Double Strike in combination with some of our other pump effects can deal a lot of damage. Then we've got a Raging Battle Mouse from Eldrain as well, a 2-1 that says we can cast our second spell at a 1 mana discount, so that makes it easier to double spell and get multiple creatures in play, also useful for Offspring. And then a Celebration can also potentially target one of our creatures, giving it plus one plus one until end of turn, so that can also enable Valiant for us. Then at 3 mana we've got Mabel, giving other mice we control plus 1 plus 1, and when it enters we generate this legendary equipment, which we can also target our creatures with to enable Valiant potentially. And then topping off our curve, the Whisker Veil Forerunner, which when we target it with a spell or ability, can look at the top 5 cards of our library to reveal a creature with mana value 3 or less from among them. And then if it's our turn, we can put it straight onto the battlefield. If it's in the opponent's turn, it goes to our hand. So we cannot set up an ambush with that extra creature. And then we've got some more 1 mana instants to enable Valiant. Monstrous Rage is awesome here, especially in combination with Double Strike, leaving behind that monster roll token, giving plus 1 plus 1 and Trample. And then a Might of the Meek can target one of our creatures drawing a card, and then giving it Trample as well as one extra power if we control a mouse. So that can also add up. And then in our mana base we also get to play with a new rock face village, which in the late game can also enable Valiant for us if we pay red mana and tap it. Target mouse we control gets one extra power and haste until end of turn, otherwise it makes red mana to cast creature spells. And then we've got a couple basics and then the dual lands we have left over. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Turn one, Swordmaster. Could also save it to enable Celebration later. Although Mabel also enables Celebration, making that Sword token. And then do we just play the Challenger here? I think so. Could see a removal spell. Grabby Giant instead, just making a treasure. And now a 4-3 back on defense. Alright, Monstrous Rage was a decent draw. So if I play the Battle Mouse and then main phase Monstrous Rage, we enable Celebration as well, which is potential way to go about it. Yeah, I guess that's fine. So let's go Battle Mouse into Monstrous Rage, targeting probably the Challenger here. And then Swordmaster targeted with the Celebration trigger, so both can attack past the Giant, but get some extra trample damage in. Sadly, the Exalt card goes to waste. Our opponent with a new Sunspine Lynx, dealing damage equal to the number of non-basic lands we control. 
and now another challenger so I can play Mabel enable celebration and then thanks to the discount for our second spell still play challenger and then I would have to maybe target the swordmaster with a celebration trigger in order to attack with most of my creatures here so that could still work out alternatively I can just play Forerunner here and then maybe set up for next turn to put a few additional creatures into play and then wait on Mabel. Yeah, let's give that a try. Ren's Resolve finds Scoundrel and Furnace Punisher, another way to punish non-basics. And Swordmaster, the pickup. So if I now play Mabel, my second spell, which is Challenger, would get a 1 mana discount. And then now if I target the Swordmaster we can set up a bigger attack, even though we miss out on the Forerunner trigger. Attack all out. Bone falls to two. If they have a board wipe we still have our haste equipment to help cross the finish line, so we should have most angles covered. And our opponent explodes, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a Keeper. Good mana with double Inspiring Vantage. And then Manifold Mouse, probably our most important card here to enable Valiant. Battle Mouse, good with Mabel, since that provides two permanents for Celebration. And then, do we play Challenger attack? The next turn I could go Battle Mouse into Manifold, although we might want to cast this with Offspring instead. So maybe play Battle Mouse now. No removal, end of turn. Tough cookie. Okay, so what I can do is use the House Mouse's ability, have my second spell be Challenger, and then I can still play the House Mouse normally to make use of the discount. Yeah, that's reasonable. Would have preferred to target the Challenger with the House Mouse, but we can do that next turn. Manifold Mouse is also an option, or we could play Mabel even, but uh, yeah, let's try this. Enable Celebration. Target itself, or we can target Challenger, but it's going to go to waste. And I would prefer to uh, not trade the Battle Mouse right now. Whereas if Challenger trades, it's not a disaster. Alright, opponent's got a bit of a squirrel or a food theme. Might of the Meek was a decent pickup. So this turn I can just Might of the Meek and then play Mabel. Or once again use the Cheeky House Mouse's adventure. And then I can still play Mabel pumping the team. And that seems reasonable. And then wait on this until we can cast it with Offspring. If Might of the Meek draws into a land I could play it with Offspring. So that's still maybe worth a shot. I found a Swordmaster, which I could offspring as well, but then I'm not attacking this turn, so let's go with Mabel. Enable Celebration, and pump the Battle Mouse. If they're gonna trade, I can at least trample for a bit more. Bonin takes it. So at the very least, next turn we can play a Manifold Mouse to give something double strike. Now a Valley Rotcaller. And our opponent's gonna sack a food, leaving behind a 2-2 squirrel now. Okay, so they're developing their board, but we found our fourth land. So I can play a single Swordmaster, and then play this with Offspring, get two triggers, one targeting Swordmaster to pump the whole team, one targeting maybe the Battle Mouse. We also get an additional Celebration trigger, so there's gonna be a lot happening.
And then I guess we can just give double strike and the celebration trigger target Swordmaster. And then we can double strike a bunch. And attack all out. So two chum blocks. Opponent takes four. All right, let's see if they've got a board wipe. Could be bad. Although we still have Crank Flame to give something haste. Heaped Harvest is fine. Can find a land. They can sacrifice it to get another or to gain three. But don't see them surviving here. Got a lot of ways we can do this. Play the adventure. Play cheeky house mouse, and then I can either equip or target with rock face village. Get a bunch of triggers. And let's go double strike. And double strike. All right, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a keepable hand. Fine to play Swordmaster turn one. Turn two, we have a bunch of options. As our opponent's a green-white, so maybe a tokens or rabbits deck, as we see the seasoned Warren guard. Alright, so if I play the Raging Battle Mouse, then next turn I can at the very least go Swordmaster plus a 2-drop, which is good, although it means not attacking this turn, whereas if I play Manifold we can give Double Strike and attack for 4 damage already. So, a couple ways to go about it. I think I like Manifold, because then next turn if I miss my land drop, I can at least play the Challenger, Target it with the Manifold Mouse and then with Valiant Exile the top card to maybe find a land. Might color grows when rabbits enter. Alright, we found a land, that's better. So now might be Battle Mouse into Challenger. And then wait on Manifold Mouse until we can offspring it. Same with the Swordmaster. And then we have to tap carefully, don't trust the auto-tapper. So now if I target the challenger, the extra card we exile is gonna go to waste. But we get two triggers here, one from Celebration as well. So let's say we target Swordmaster twice, then it's gonna be a three-powered creature, potentially with double strike. Yeah, I guess that's good, and then... Challenger can still attack. Do we attack with Manifold Mouse? I don't think so. Although we have another one, so it wouldn't be a disaster if it trades. Opponent's at 10, and then wouldn't mind drawing a land for next turn, but can still make plays without it. Now the Paw Patch Recruit with Offspring. Opponent's got a 3-3 Might Caller. And found a land. So, I think the plan is Swordmaster and then Offspring the Manifold Mouse. Enable Celebration. So we've got four ways to trigger Valiant. So, probably gonna end up targeting both Swordmasters. Giving those double strike. Question is, do we use the Raging Battle Mouse trigger to enable the Summoning Six Swordmaster? I think that makes more sense, so we'll give double strike to the Battle Mouse itself. As well as a Manifold Mouse. 
and then Swordmaster just gets plus one plus one to pump the whole squad. And our opponent just took it, just too much damage, they would have to jump with their whole board onto the next one. We are on the draw with the Keeper. Turn one Heartfire, turn two Ember Heart, and then we've got ways to enable Valiant, as well as maybe some late game with the Forerunner. Put under red black, Claw goes to the graveyard. So maybe a Lizard aggro deck. Vine Lasher plus a land to enable landfall. And Fable Passage can do it twice, in fact, and draw our second Forerunner. They seem to come in pairs. For now, we can just uh, play a Challenger. Gonna hang on to the village since it may mess with how many spells we can cast if we want to cast more non creature spells. Also an excellent way to commit crimes, if that's what you're interested in. But it is more of a lizard deck than you gecko, kind of like a burning tree emissary, making two mana when it enters, as long as the opponent lost life. Opponent just using it to discard and draw. And there's another vine lasher. Okay, so this turn, probably just attack with both, sitting on Might of the Meek. And then second main, probably play a Heartfire Hero. Right, opponent triple blocking Heartfire. So in that case, we want to probably take out a Vine Lasher. Find a Monstrous Rage, which I could still cast actually. So let's see, yeah, I guess we would at least trade for all their stuff, which seems worthwhile. And then deal six more damage on the way out, since we had a six-powered creature here. And then play Heartfire. Yeah, that was a lucky top deck. Now we still have Forerunner, and at the very least can target it with Rock Phase Village. Shieldroad's gonna now play defense, and I don't have the best attack set up, so yeah, just get a Forerunner and pass. So the goal now is to kind of build up a board, go wide, and then hopefully uh, get them with Swordmaster pumping the team. Could play Swordmaster now, target it with Village, but one extra power is probably not enough to set up a profitable attack, so instead could play another Forerunner, or we could target Forerunner with a Rock Phase Village. And then I can still deploy some cheap creatures. And find Manifold Mouse. Put it on the battlefield so that can give double strike now. And uh, no real reason to play anything out right now. So give Forerunner double strike. And then I'm okay trading it for Shieldrits. They could have another Shieldrit in hand, I suppose. Now we've already enabled Valiant, and it's only once per turn. So our opponent accepts the trade. I think I still empty my hands. Is a Sweeper maybe a concern? It could be. So maybe a reason not to overextend too much. Although I still have Forerunner to repopulate the board, so I think we still go all out here. And then we'll see what our opponent does. If they have the cover-up and then gets rid of Forerunner out of my graveyard, that would have been bad, but yeah, just another shield root was the logical conclusion. So I can play Mabel to pump my team. And then Manifold Mouse targets Swordmaster to pump the team again, and that should set up a reasonable attack. Give this double strike. 
And I'll just go all out. So yeah, at least good to see a bit of the Forerunner in action and finding Manifold Mouse was probably our uh, best card here. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have a somewhat painful but probably keepable hand. Just play House Mouse on one. Turn two, could go Battle Mouse, could go Manifold. Opponent also on the mouse deck. Uh, inspiring Vantage is better. So maybe attack first. If they block, we can Monstrous Rage, although that's my whole turn. Or I can just go Manifold for Double Strike. Yeah, that feels better. Don't expect too much removal in this matchup. And then next turn, if I go Battle Mouse and Monstrous Rage in my first main phase, I also enable Celebration for what it's worth. Hardfire Hero might be the better play now alongside Raging Battle Mouse. Unless our opponent's keeping up a burn spell, then Monstrous Rage could maybe save my creature, but then I can't play its first main phase to enable Celebration, so it's a little tricky. Yeah, starting with. A raging Battle Mouse is probably okay. See what the response is. And then, yeah, if we're afraid of removal here, maybe just go to attackers. Give Cheeky House Mouse double strike, and then second main play Hardfire Hero. Although if it's a three damage burn spell, Monstrous Rage doesn't really matter. So, yeah, I'll go Hardfire Hero here. Celebration has been enabled. And it was a Lightning Strike, so yeah, keeping a Monstrous Rage would not have helped. But now we have Celebration for the House Mouse. But without Double Strike, our uh, damage output has been reduced significantly. It's going to be a Slick Shot, so they are just on Mono Red Aggro, as opposed to a Mouse deck. So can definitely expect to see more Burn Spells. For now... I don't think we block in case they have their own Monstrous Rage. And they might cast it anyway. Might of the Meek. Found a land. So step one, I'll cast my own Might of the Meek. Hope to draw some creature we can cast here. Another land. So now I cannot enable Celebration even with Monstrous Rage. So 7 plus 3 is 10, so we don't quite have lethal here. Although there's a chance we down the way back. A lightning strike goes face. And I'm sure they'll have another burn spell here. And yeah, another Lightning Strike will do it. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have a two-lander. So it's a little bit clunky, although Hardfire Hero is a good recipient of all these copies of Monstrous Rage, as well as the Cheeky House Mouse. So maybe this is still keepable. And then I may want to play Battlefield Forge over the village, since village doesn't cast Monstrous Rage. So that if I draw another red source that actually casts it, we can maybe better deploy our hand. Put on blank green, found the mountain, so that works. So now definitely going to cast one Monstrous Rage, and then I could use the Cheeky House Mouse as well, save the other Monstrous Rage for later. Could also cast a House Mouse without adventuring at first, just to have two creatures that can attack. Can also give the House Mouse haste with the Rock Face Village in our next turn. Alright, and Cities Roots. Opponent's going to be making lots of plants. And we drew our second Forerunner, not ideal here. 
but uh, we'll stick to the plan. House Mouse with haste, I think, beats targeting the Hardfire Hero. Hit for six. Maverick can get in the way. Fill the graveyard for various graveyard synergies. And now a repossession to get back Honest Rutstein and leave behind a plant token from Insidious Roots. Manifold Mouse was a decent draw, so now I could cast it and then still Monstrous Rage. If I give this double strike, we might be able to get there. I'll have to be very careful with how we tap our mana. So again, don't trust the auto tapper. Since the village doesn't cast Monstrous Rage. And then... Yeah, I think it's just double strike. And only attack with a hero. Or I could attack with both. Just so they put Maverick in front of House Mouse. And then we should still get there. Although I could also pump up the House Mouse itself. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We have a keepable hand. Could use a third land. Monstrous Rage to draw. So turn one, do we like Hardfire Hero? And then maybe wait on the House Mouse to use the Adventures first. Turn 2 I could already play a Manifold Mouse. Opponent on Lizards, I see. Right, also an aggressive deck. And they could be packing a bit more removal than we are. So this turn could still go Cheeky House Mouse Adventure and then just play it. Which can technically trade. And then hang on to Manifold Mouse until we're maybe a little bit better set up. And then they wouldn't be able to block here. A third land would go a long way next turn, helping us empty our hand. Now with the infamous Cruel Claw is a good one too, if it can ever connect. And our deck is not great at playing defense. So we could be in trouble now, missing our land drop. I can play Manifold Mouse, target Hardfire Hero, give it double strike, which also gives it an extra counter, and then technically I could still double block the Cruel Claw. But uh, yeah, don't expect that uh, double block to work out too well for me. So just gotta hope they don't find anything too exciting. If I double block, they could also just have spot removal to take out both of my creatures. I think I just gotta take it and hope for the best. Trading for the Scale Scorch and House Mouse could have been reasonable. But when we have Mabel coming up, the more creatures I have in play, the better. And uh, Shieldroot in addition to the Osteomancer is pretty good. Still no land. So what's my play now? Monstrous Rage on Hardfire Hero after giving a double strike is probably the most damage I can deal. Right, opponent blocks with Shieldred, so at least we can take it out without losing the Hardfire Hero here. Opponent's at 3. Play this on defense. And if Hardfire Hero dies, our opponent dies as well. Manifold Mao is doing work. Still sending in two creatures. Now might be reasonable to either double block Cruel Claw or just block the 3-2 with my 2-1. And 
then again, they need something on defense to soak up hard fire without killing it, which is going to be pretty tricky. They can use the Osteomancer to get Shieldred back. But if that trades, they still die. So opponent going for Augur instead on the land. So now best I can do is probably going to be Mabel. And then go for Double Strike. And attack. And that'll do it. Awesome. Alright, so we got to see our red-white mouse deck in action, and it certainly packs a punch. Still not entirely sure what the uh, best configuration is going to be going forward. Possible we just cut the 4-drop max out on Mabel, or maybe include a few more removal spells. The mana base can also be built in a number of ways, but I've been pretty happy with uh, Village giving us that activated ability in the late game, which also means we need enough other red sources to cast our red spells and white sources to cast the adventure from the house mouse for instance so the mana base is kind of a puzzle in and of itself but for now i want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day